Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how to make puddles using a single material in Blender. Now this is going to be using some simple tricks and techniques that we've learned in other videos, which hopefully you've seen by now. If you haven't, then please subscribe and go and check them out. But for now, we're just going to get straight into it. So what we're going to do is delete our default cube, add a plane, scale it up by five and add a new default material. Now here we have our principled BSDF shader. We're just going to bring this color down to be a bit darker so we can sort of pretend it's a, I guess, a ground concrete road texture. And we're going to add a glossy BSDF shader and this is going to be our water. We're going to add a mix shader. I'm going to connect the principled BSDF to the bottom, the glossy to the top shader and put the shader output into the surface. And there you go. And we're just going to bring the roughness of the glossy all the way down so that it's a perfect mirrored reflection. Now, if you see, if we switch between the, on the factor, we're going from 100% glossy water to the 100% plain ground texture. Now, this is obviously not what we want. We want to separate the ground from the water into sort of puddle like shapes. To do this, if you've seen any of my previous tutorials on how to mix textures, you'll know that we're going to add a Musgrave texture and connect the height to the factor of the mix shader. We're also going to add a converter and color ramp, pop that in between the Musgrave and the mix. And this is just going to allow us to control with a bit more precision the size of the puddles. Actually, what we're going to do as well is just switch the principled BSDF and the glossy over in the mix shader. And you'll just see that that means that the puddles are the smaller shape and the ground is the bigger. Unless you want to have larger puddles, in which case keep it the other way around. As you can see, if we move the black and white of the color ramp around, we can control the size of the puddles. And if we go into the Musgrave texture itself and play around with these settings, you can really start to craft the uh, the shape of your puddles using the Musgrave texture as the mask, pretty much. So if we add a bit more detail and dimension, make it seem a bit rougher. And a cool thing as well is that if you go into the color ramp and bring, for example, the black value up, it's going to overlay a bit more of that wetness onto the base ground material. Same thing applies in the other direction. If we bring that down, go onto the white value, and bring that down to a grayer texture, you're going to actually reduce the opacity of the water so you can see the gray underneath. Now, because there's no texture there, it's a bit hard to see, but it is actually revealing the principled BSDF or your ground texture underneath, which is pretty good. And that's it. That's pretty much a summary of how to create puddles. That's what you're looking for. That's it for now. But just going to go into a bit more detail on some other areas if you want to stick around and learn about a bit more. So. If we press Control T on the Musgrave texture, this will add a mapping node to it, which will give us even greater control over the size, rotation, location of the puddles to really give you that bit more precision on where to place your puddles on your texture. If you want to sort of move them into a specific place within a scene to get that perfect camera angle, then you can do that. Now let's go quickly make our water material, which I have a tutorial on, but we're going to do a quick fire version of it here by adding a bump node and also a Musgrave texture to that, connecting the height into the height, the normal into the normal. And if you've seen the water texture, you know that we're just gonna play around with the strength on the bump, bring that down kind of as low as possible without hitting zero, and then just play around with your Musgrave texture until you get a water material that kind of looks, it's got some sort of ripples in it. It's not just plain 100% flat, which if you wanted, then you could do that, but water so, you know, often has a little bit of a ripple to it. Then just for example's sake, just so we can sort of demonstrate the opacity of the water, just going to add a quick image texture to our ground. Just so you can see what I'm talking about here, if we bring the opacity down by changing the white value to gray, you can actually see there, you can see the texture underneath the water, which is a bit more realistic when you're sort of putting puddles on, on the ground because it's not like a deep lake where you can't see the surface beneath. It's, it's only a thin layer of water. If you bring it all the way up, you know, that kind of looks like there's these huge potholes. Alternatively, if we bring the black value up a bit more, it makes the rest of the ground texture look really wet, which, you know, if you're going for a super wet day and it's raining and you want these huge puddles and you want the ground to look wet as well, then uh, just play around with that color ramp and you can really change the wetness value of everything. But again, if we sort of go the opposite way and bring the white value down to a gray, this is, I guess, simulating a, you know, later on the water has been sitting for a while. It's starting to evaporate and you're sort of getting these really thin, shallow layered puddles where you can, when you zoom in, see a little bit underneath. 
And that's it, really. That's how a quick and easy way to make puddles all on one single plane. This is just one shader. Again, there's no depth to this. You're just using four vertices and you can apply this to a huge, huge plane and create your ground like that. Just a quick summary here. We've got our ground texture plugged into the mix shader, our water glossy texture plugged in as well. And then we're just using a Musgrave texture to act as the mask to split them apart with a color ramp to sort of give you more control over the opacity of the water. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.